what we're gonna have to start off with is we're gonna enter the draft for game number one. Secret ships on the left, secret ship on the left, Hoenn on the right. Yeah, let's talk about those regional play styles a little bit and how they interact. Secret ship playing a lot of even in their own region off the beaten path kind of picks. Mm -hmm. Definitely known for having some interesting draft strategies. And well, secret ship in their regional finals was actually giving up Lapras Umbreon over to the enemy team mm -hmm. and having a counter of it with that Sylveon on top path. Looking like we're gonna change it up a little bit with the Lapras brand from Secret ship but Hoenn doing their research could be banning that Zacian. Yeah, nothing surprising as far as picks, but I really do want to talk about that Zacian ban. Yeah. That is really, really smart. We've seen especially, like I mentioned before, a lot of teams from Asia, different Asian regions, are very, very strong with this Pokemon. When we look at Oyasumi and Makuro matches that we just got to see, we saw see we got some pretty strong examples on stream, I would say. Uh, this is going to be a Pokemon that you are going to want to have to deal with. And if you don't know exactly how to counter it, then there's one way you can always counter it. That's a ban. Yep, exactly. Now, the where the draft is lot has been really interesting. Yako on Secret Ship, of course, playing for this team last year in the support role. Playing a lot of Wissy last year, but now they get to kind of showcase their talent with that Hoopa. It seems like the final selections from Secret Ship are going to be Obion on this Lucario and Yakubari on the Trevenant. Very interesting. Now, the especially, I mean, the, the Lucario is specifically an interesting one here. We're actually going through a lot of really interesting picks as well for the final pick on Hoenn. Mm, there, this is this is a lot of different roles. Please pick something. Whoa, Aegis Slash, Aegis Slash, and Lucario. I think for the first time, both of them today. Wow, very interesting. Okay, this is going to be a, a pick from Frank of Hoenn to play this Aegis Slash. It's going to be really solid into the Trevenant. I think that one v one matchup is great and of course the last hit secure is also so impressive so this is going to be a really really exciting match i mean it's a gamble on an aegis slash like this however it can reap big rewards wonder chef it can I, I we've seen it just very rarely this season but you know if you're familiar with live season there's actually a lot of pokemon in these both of these teams that you would be very familiar with so i'm excited to see how they do with all the changes but you know what i'm getting word that uh, our casting is just not enough so we've got to bring back Spreggles and Dupe Snacks for this one. Well, I mean, we're, we're here to put the icing on the cake, which is something that Spreggles does. Trevenant's still favored by the East, coming back into this one. And then uh, one cheeky sword. Yeah, Aegis Slash making their way here to the championship stage. And, you know, uh, I'm not a believer. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm not a sword believer right now, but I'm happy to be proven wrong right here. This is a big game. Secret Ship's in a must-win situation yep. right now, but if any team can do it, it's the number one team out of Japan. Secret Ship, your purple team. Let's start this thing out. Hoenn, your orange team. One thing about Secret Ship that we could say is when they're back against the, uh, is against the wall, that's when they really come out swinging and are able to deliver big-time punches, rally back, and push deep into these tournaments. We saw it last Last year, we've seen it at the tail end of the UCS Season 2, and uh, really, Secret Ship is trying to rekindle that magic and do it right now against Hoenn. Hoenn right now splitting this central area, it looks like, between this Bulbasaur and this little Vulpix right here. Very interesting strategy coming out from them as they have Blissey in this top path up here supporting Aegislash. And here comes a very early Alolan Ninetales. Well, Alolan Ninetales is early because it's split halfway, and of course, you don't have to overcommit too much. Get it online, let it have an impact in the path. That Aegislash is going to need help right now just to Han Edge, and it's against Lucario, the UCS Season 1 top path menace. Yeah, what happened to Lucario? I mean, a lot of other Pokemon happened to Lucario, sure. but it is back. It did receive some buffs recently. So the question is, is Lucario actually in fighting shape? We have not seen a lot of teams pick it up here today. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, well, this is the first time that we've seen it that you and I have gotten to broadcast it here. And we're going to see if those buffs are enough to make it stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the perennial favorites we've seen in UCS Season 2. Here we have a Pokemon that we've seen a ton today, and that is Inteleon. Inteleon has been all over almost every single game if it has not been banned out by some of these teams. Obi-Wan up in this top path here with that power-up punch, Lucario, and it looks like that was stolen right there by Secret Ship. Without a doubt, my big surprise here is why Hoenn has their Alone in Ninetales back in the center area. I would have figured they would have peeled down to the bottom path and sent that uh, Bulbasaur, who's struggling to level up now, back in the middle. Now you have a Hoopa that's going to bully, gets free value here. If they can take any 
anything. That's a boon, but mainly they're wasting time with the biggest level Pokemon on the side of Hoenn. And they're able to blink back out of existence, come right back through, and just cause more static. Yeah, and here we go. We're going to see if they're able to secure this. No Actually, way. Boy, getting extremely low right here, having to back up, being chased down right now. But no, actually able to make it out of that situation really, really close. This is something that Hoopa can do that we do see somewhat often is just this harassment of the central area of the enemy team. Yeah, and really bullied the A9 very well, blinking back. And of course, the Ivysaur is ticked over at level 5, but it's still level 5. Instead, you have an A9 that's about to tick over to 7. They got bullied by a Hoopa, and now nothing's really online for Hoenn. Secret Shift are going to try and push this advantage. Peel back, reset, see where you can get, go from here. Interesting stuff here from Secret Ship. So that was an even break on that bottom goal zone. So later in the match, if they have similar goal zones, top and bottom, you know, if they both break top and bottom, you know that you are behind. However, they're giving themselves great positional advantage at this first fight down here. Aegislash possibly having to run here. Nice big wide guard coming out so those boosteds can heal this Aegislash as they fight and pick up a huge KO. Maybe I was wrong about the sword. I mean, picking up a KO against a half HP Hoopa, there's nothing to write home about. That's exactly the Pokemon that Secret Ship is more than happy for Frank to have knocked out there. However, Hoenn prioritizing this Regieleki quickly, and that's leaving the Urshifu to take it for themselves. It is sealed up, it is flying in the face of Secret Ship, they have the Hoopa, so they're pivoting hard, and they're going to be able to defend this goal zone if they really want to. That's right, here we go. Reggie Rock going down right now. Nice secure here as Aegislash jumps on in, and Reggie does make it into this goal zone. Not a huge overcap, though, on the side of Holland, so it's actually a lot closer. Well, the Unite move from the sword goes wide, doesn't quite catch the Inteleon, but you can see what they're trying to do. Peewee is in the back line with the Inteleon, and they're trying to use the sword's big boosted autos that send it forward, maybe even its Unite move, to try and cash in on a big-time KO on that skinny like a frog. And here we go, Blissey getting very, very low, taken down by this Urshifu after its Unite move. We're going to see if this fight continues as we have our special attackers moving in from the side of Hoenn. No, getting taken down here. Nice big snipe shot as they're continuing this fight. The uh, Inteleon misses right there, but they are still able to take down Sword. Here comes Hoopa once again, getting vision for Inteleon right now. We may have a snipe shot. No, just barely misses. <laughs> just barely missed running that zigzag pattern saying you can't hit a moving target, and that tends to be true. Hoopa finally exacting some quality KO that they expected to get earlier, cashed it in now. And now Secret Ship peeling back. They are up by 21 points. So all in all, a good little tit for tat for them, but still ahead just a bit. Yeah, if you're Secret Ship, I think you're happy with this trade here right you gave up your top goal that gives you three big chunks of experience for you you gave up the end of you uh, crushed the enemy's bottom goal that only gives them two you're also up on points you've secured the objective that give your gives your team team-wide xp so i think you're feeling pretty good about how this match is going so far yeah, and we're going to see both of these Reggies spawn within 10 seconds of each other. Reggie Alecki going to hit first, and that's where Hoenn prioritized the first time. I'd be shocked if they don't prioritize it there again. It seems to be part of their strategy. They did close out that Tier 1 goal zone with a small overdone. The fight is breaking out. Boosted Auto comes through, gets a quick time KO on the Urshifu. And I'll tell you what, Frank is able to drive in deep. We've got the rings unbound. The hoop is going to try and stem this goal zone. A four-person stun with the fist. Is the follow-up going to be there? They're trying to shell in more damage. Lucario's going in. It's getting spaced out by the Trevenant. Lucario's eating immediately Trevenant trying to buy some time eat some body but it's not quite working two players down here on the side of secret ship and Hoenn's fine just peeling back and going on top of this basement Reggie and it's just Yakubari that's gonna have to do it for the squad here's a quick wicked blow gets a quick KO on the night Dale Reggie rocks at half HP and the pressure continues as of course TLR getting it done wow incredible stuff right here secret ship sealing up this fight getting a nice big secure right there once again Aegis slash unite move not able to find any purchase and get any value for the side of owen they had a great fight they caught them in that central area they just couldn't seal the deal after that hoopa united you said catching four members of owen right there and that was really tough for them to come back from nice ko here in this central area as it looks like we have members of secret ship possibly forming up to fight in this top path over reggie Alecki. but first it's time to do a little farming and get some experience clear all of these wild Pokemon off their side of the map. Well, Texas getting vision. Of course, that allows the Alone Ninetales and the Sword to dive in on Yakubari, but Yakubari is a stout tree, and it is much more than that. The cut is down. Snipe shot goes wide, and now it's Hoenn that has the positional advantage on the Regieleki. Yakubari's on the backside. Big push, cleans up three, hand seals up the Regieleki. Legendary defender flag out of a legendary defender there. The rings are unbound again. We got the stuns, we got the KOs, we got three players down, and try to get some points in before that thing hits. Are they going to be able to it goes in, 
Ooh. And we get ourselves a big 36 point overdunk. Real nice overdunk for the side of Secret Ship. Puts them up now 196 to 154. We have one minute until Ray Quaza hits this map. And Secret Ship, as we said before, is in a must win situation. They need these games to stay alive in their group stage. Right now, they are ahead of Hoenn, but this fight can go either way. We've seen Hoenn have some really amazing fights when they're coordinated as a group. We've also seen some big moments where they've been caught out, and it feels like this Urshifu is really taking a few members of their team to task. Oh, unfortunately, their Venusaur just now ticked over to level 12. It's unlikely they hit 13 before this big fight, which is a huge break point. However, if you look at the other side of the map, that is a level 14 Urshifu. Yeah, DLR is massive, and they're going to have to get behind Gakubari, go with like a big uh, big push, big horn leech there, and follow up, and then engage, and try and close things out with a wicked blow. The, oh, the slow bro getting coached right there is big. There's two minutes, 20 seconds left. They can get a KO. That's massive. Wygar comes through. They're using the Trevi Knights. They want to take this fight now. DLR's on the backside. They get slow beamed immediately. Now they're caught in a nightmare. Trevor and Woodhammer's come out, and so does the Burden Anger. Two players have a secret ship. Owen's looking to convert on this and get it done in a big way. Rings are unbound. Yakov's trying to buy some time for this team, and Lucario's trying to engage, but they got two. A big stun to catch it in. KO streak of two for them, but the Hoopa goes for the save. Three players down on both sides. Can Hoopa catch themselves a reset? They do. Frank stands tall as the sword, but now both teams have to wait for everybody to get back in this thing. Everybody needs to come back, and we have two huge Unite moves to look out for. An Urshifu Unite, that targeted massive Unite from a level 14 Pokemon, but we've got the Bliss Assistance on the side of Owen that could save someone. Venusaur right now, level 14 after picking up KOs in that fight. One minute, 30 seconds on the clock, and we still need something to happen here for Hoenn if they are going to stay in this match. Nice little reset, sending Tree back home, and so far it looks like no one is starting this fight. Froy putting some damage out onto Rayquaza, oh, and here oh, comes oh, the Woodhammer. Woodhammer comes out, catches four, Horn Leech goes through, but that opens up a DLR to get on the backside. They're trying to smother Texas before they can play this. It's right on top of the Venusaur. Venusaur catches the Unite move. There's no Wicked Blow. Follow up, two players down. Lucario and Urshifu are down. Spragles. Hoenn moves to the middle. This might be the opportunity they want. 55 seconds left. Hoopa gets one back the other way, but the advantage is still in the hands of Hoenn. Secret Chip is looking for an opportunity. Peewee's on the backside. They're trying to line up the snipe shot. They nail the alone with nine tails. Absolutely buckled him. Still, Gakubari's on the hunt. They're again buying time. Rayquaza's at about 20%. Who's gonna actually flip on top of this thing? Trevor to come through on the Venusaur. They're gonna pivot now. Gakubari's in the middle. And Peewee is stinging true with these snipe shots. They're going back through the surface there. It's at the low eight bomb comes through. Who's waiting? The world with it up. The trade. The Gakubari, you absolute mutant of AO Silent. Nobody's gonna fail this tree. We going for it. This ghost is showing their face now. Friendly neighborhood cast. We're gonna go get some points in for the squad. Incredible stuff here from Secret Ship, securing that in the face of Hoenn, taking down that Venusaur, taking away their opportunity for a big secure right there, and then taking it with the Trevenant. What a back and forth fight between these two squads. Yakubari is an absolute mutant. Spraggles, wood hammers, four nails in front of him, hit them all. Horn Leech, four players in front of him, Drag them all, opening the door for the squad, going up and sealing Ray Quaza too easy for the tree. That's right, call Professor X because we've got a mutant out here. We're going to send this thing over to a couple of mutants, if I do say so myself. Zoic's Wonder Chef, break this down. We are mutants, but unfortunately our superpower is just numbers. Uh, so, so sorry to Chef and I for that one. Let's take a look at those numbers from that incredible game. Secret Ship really bringing things down to the wire before they secured that Rayquaza. What a Trevenant game from Gekubari. I know. By the way, my superpower is actually being specifically worse at numbers. It uh, yes. unfortunately just goes the other direction. I, I think that maybe Doopstacks actually saw this. I almost fell out of my chair at the last Woodhammer in the Ray Pit where it hit literally like four or five members of the team. That was disgusting. So good. And of so course we can good. see some of the damage in this game. We know how it went, of course. It was all down to that final Ooh. moment. But wow, the damage, even coming out of a snipe shot in town, which does tend to be, I would say, considerably lower damage numbers yeah. is uh, stats a you know, six digit. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, looking for the higher KO number, not necessarily the damage number. Now, mm -hmm. Hoenn never really fell out of this match at any point. This was an extremely close game between Secret Ship and Hoenn. However, I think these final moments, people were definitely considering 
considering Secret Ship to be in charge. However, Dawnlux's Lux's Venusaur looking very good. This Venusaur was definitely the biggest challenge for Secret Ship to overcome. However, they did it kind of time and time again. Pee Wee <laughs> looking so amazing on this Inteleon. The damage number is exceptional, and DLR really capitalizing constantly with this Urchifu. Yeah, honestly, it was just a combination of everybody in every moment from Secret Ship. And I do really feel like, honestly, there was a point where Hoenn looked like they really had a heads up as far as one of those final team fights. But uh, so much came down to what we're going to see pretty soon. This was the first of the team fights at Rayquaza. But there was that moment where everybody was down, and we did have Pee Wee sitting in the back, landing so many just unbelievable snipe shots and it took down like two or three even things up and then allowed the ability to take that final ray which was so beautiful this was a really big initiation that led to this and here we go we can start seeing them there's the a9 going down and then i think we see somebody oh actually we got to skip forward a little bit but there were a few more picks right there it was beautiful stuff yeah gyakubari of course literally a part of every single little engagement texas was trying to hold out hope for a egg bomb knockout on the rayquaza but of course it is the trap evident of Gyakubari, Secret Ship popping off on stage after what was an amazing game number one. This roster is really coming to the world stage with a lot to prove, and Gyakubari, of course, front and center, our player of the game, 90,000 damage taken. This Trevenant was in every single fight. Yeah, just enabling so much. Being able to place your Woodhammers where it's not just like I'm just going to get the first person who walks into my range, right. but to be able to get the maximum advantage is huge, especially when you are controlling for a snipe shot and Teleon, to be able to place exactly who you want to place, exactly where you want to place them, and communicate that with your carry. That is by far one of the most difficult things to do. Absolutely. I mean, I'm so interested to see how draft happens in game number two. I mean, being able to rely on a Trevenant as your main defender pick and have it be that impactful? Mm -hmm. I mean, Secret Ship's draft game is going to be so terrifying to go up against if they have all this deep of pockets amongst their players. I mean, Lucario having some impact too. It looks like the bands are going to remain exactly the same. Hoenn now going to have to have their chance of first selection. I mean, I would probably be selecting an Umbreon here, but how about you, Wonder Chef? Where would you land? Honestly, it's it's tough to say. Yeah, I was going to say as well, the Inteleon, yeah. giving that back over to Secret Ship seems like such a mistake, but so does giving them an Umbreon, so what yeah. are you going to do, right? That's going to be interesting. Now, I will say, selfishly, I'm pretty excited because this might be the best chance I have to see Chandelure oh. here on broadcast, by the mm -hmm. way. Pee Wee, one of the best Chandelure players, of course, also an amazing Inteleon, so maybe we'll see that one. However, it was kind of surprising to you to see that Hoopa pick there. Yeah, I mean, that, that does of course leave the Umbreon as a pick, but this is a tough decision because now you're like, well, do we as our second pick? Well, actually, okay, this is really surprising to me. Lucario, I feel like you could wait a very long time to get. I feel yeah. like you could have snatched up something else that is way more contested. Yeah, a really interesting draft strategy from Hoenn to put this much priority to where's Lucario. However, it's pretty solid at winning your path early game. Of course, that Unite move is going to be impactful as well. Fortunately, probably no Chandelure. Instead, we're going to see the Alolan Ninetales, and how can I discredit them for that? A very, very impactful yeah. Pokemon all tournament long. And of course, being backed up by Kyakubari's oh. incredible Trevenant play. Oh. And let's go! Zoinks on top, baby. We still get Chandelure, and it's on Dawnlux. It's the opposite team. You still get it eventually. You're just going to take it as a win. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are seeing no Umbreon. This is one of the first times we've seen no Umbreon ban or pick throughout the yeah. entire tournament today. But it makes sense. Gyakubari makes Trevenant look stronger than Umbreon. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Obeyon's Blastoise in the top path is also going to be a problem. I mean, Frank's going to be able to control the tempo of the early game. However, it's going to become an issue when DLR shows up after that first clear to join in with Obeyon's advancements in the top path. That engagement, I think, might be pivotal to how this match ends up, but we'll have to see how it goes down. Yakubari on Trevenant two games in a row, Wonder Chef. This is going to be wild. But of course, we are going to be throwing it over to our casters to take over game number two. I cannot wait. Let's see how it goes down. Give me the download, Spraggles. Just kidding. I'm taking it. Trevenant is back, and that's all I want to see out of Secret Ship right now. Gyakubari came unglued in game one. Making it happen here is the hope in game two. Putting uh, Hoenn on the chopping block, though, Lucario coming into the mix and Chandelure coming into the mix as well. Two Pokemon that we haven't seen much of, uh, but making a shining uh, appearance here for Hoenn here in game two. I gotta say, I'm excited to see this Lucario once again looking like a pirate. 
Very, very nice stuff from the side of our purple team. Heading in here to game number two. Ho and your purple team, Secret Ship, your orange team. And as we said before, Secret Ship is on a must-win run right now to stay alive in their group and have a chance to move on to day two and our top eight. And here we go. A little bit of an invasion happening early. Oh, just a bit of a misplay, though. Missing their Astonish. Yeah, I mean... Again, we've said it time and time, over and over, and for those of you that are just tuning in, what is that Hoopa doing but trying to just buy their team time to get into the mix and try and take over early? Especially in the face of Frank Lucari, one of the strongest early game characters, and you have Obreon on the Blastoise trying to get to Blastoise, which is one of the slowest Pokemon to get to that level nine. Yeah, it is a, always a tough putt to get that Blastoise evolved, but once you do, of course, such a powerful Pokemon, one of the most devastating Unite moves inside the game right here. You know, something that actually has been shocking me a bit today is seeing so much Trevenant, but I think we might be seeing that because of the ban rate right here. Lapras getting banned out more than half of the games. Yeah, even so, the East has been favoring this tree, and it's looked phenomenal in the hands of these players. Yakubari is no exception here, as uh, obviously Secret Ship tried to get a decent engagement on the Altaria Swablu, didn't overstay their welcome, peeled back a little bit, and really, they're just going to try and get DLR going on this Urshifu yet again. Yeah, DLR on this Urshifu is going to be a, a huge difference maker. Obi-Wan, we are seeing that water spout, so we are going to be having a rapid spin Blastoise. A lot of players, you know, lately have been choosing the Surf Hydro Pump moveset, but this is the more damage-focused Blastoise using their abilities to really head into the back line of the enemy team, looking for that Chandelure, looking for that Inteleon, and trying to take them down with one big combo. Without a doubt, I mean, you see that Surf to really buy spacing for Pokemon like Chandelure. We've seen that before. But now, since you don't really need to buy that much spacing, A9 is a ranged character, but it doesn't fight from that far away. Rapid Spin Water Spout build a, a front line for this thing in tandem with Gyakubari, and then let those Pokemon take over. Look at this right here. Huge score from Secret Ship. 30 in that bottom path. Urshifu get powered up already level 8. Level 8, of course, level 9 by the basement Reggie would be ideal. Of course, Hoenn has favored the top in game 1, Secret Ship the, the bottom objective. We're going to see if that's where they decide to go here in about 20 seconds. Yeah, and here we go. DLR actually in a little bit of trouble right here. Jumping forward, trying to pick up a KO on this Inteleon. It's the Alolan Ninetales, the Blizzard flying forward that actually is able to secure that KO as points rain into this top path. Obviously, if you're a Pokemon stacking up a stacking item, this is a great opportunity for you. But, like you said before, you possibly are giving up that bottom path. Hoopa bringing them down, though. We're going to have to see how this fight goes in the bottom path, as it looks like Alolan Ninetales is going to be pushed off of this goal. Yeah, Don Lux is going to be down there on the Chandelure, trying to get some spacing. The Surf actually goes into their face, and a quick snipe shot gets KO on the Rapid Strike Urshifu. DLR goes back, and they're waiting for their turn to come back into the game. Finally, Hoenn has a, a positional advantage on the basement objective. They're going to take that for free. Secret Ship can't even contest. Beautiful stuff there from Hoenn. Unfortunately, you know, a Unite move used on the Inteleon that actually didn't get that much value, but they got the objective, and that is what is important, giving them all that team-wide experience as well as that very nice buff. Absolutely. And now the fact that Secret Ship still has both goal zones up is something they are content for. Gakubari getting low. The Unite move by the Urshifu is used and is just trying to keep those hits going on uh, that wild Pokemon. That's not the target you want. Woodhammers are coming out and a nice little push here. They're trying to follow up on Slowbro as the rest of the team has blinked out to get some HP. They're going to pull back through. Poopa just keeps chipping in and chipping in. Woodhammers buying time, buying time. And DLR just looking for an opportunity to engage. Two players with a clean reset here. If they roll back through the portal, they'll be at full HP they decide to pivot up top. That was a really pretty play from uh, Secret Ship right there. I mean, what an amazing job of just getting out of that situation. It looked like multiple members of Secret Ship were going to go down throughout that fight. Beautiful hyperspace highway, sending them back to base, and then I think very intelligently deciding not to re-engage with that fight because it would have been an absolute nightmare. That being said, uh, the, the first Regice and the, uh, the second Regieleki have been taken by Hoenn, and they are putting good pressure onto this Secret Ship team. Secret Ship's still in the lead, but now the KOs are starting to fall. First one, Don Lux on top of the Hoopa, and now they keep pressing on. Bliss Assistance goes back, and they leverage that Lucario Unite move as well. That thing comes out at rapid fire pace, and now tons of points are going in. Hoenn taking a lead. Hoenn's taking the lead. They've also taken the top and bottom tier one goal zone, so they've opened up a lot of experience 
seconds here for Secret Ship, but they've also given themselves, like you said, a nice little score lead and positional advantage at all of these remaining fights. Without question, Secret Ship is going to want to break one of these goals, possibly leave another one up for a sneaky score later, but they know they are behind, and they know that their mobility towards these objectives are actually cut back quite a bit. As the match goes on, of course you want big overcaps, of course you want to be up on the scoreboard, but taking away your enemy team's ability to move and to get healing and shields from these goals is very, very important. As we see the Hoopa Unite move, bring the squad in, big stun. Rapid Spin Water Scott comes through that big laser beam to the rings unbound. Hoopa makes it happen in the Trevi Unite. Gakubari, boom, re re ejects, excuse me, ejects to readjust and chips up a couple players here. And now Secret Ship has all the spacing they need. That's a Rapid Strike. Urshik was sealing up. DLR taking it for the team. Three players down. And VR win is spinning the win here as another player for Hoenn goes down and suddenly Secret Ship roars back into this game. Right back into this game, but with some weak scores right there. You can see they, they just overcapped that by one. Even though the goal zones are the same, they are behind on points right now. And this is what we talk about a lot when we talk about over, you know, capping or over dunking on these goals and how important it is throughout the match. Right now, if the match ended, even though the goals are the same, Hoenn is up and they will win this thing. Of course, when they're going to get some alerts here soon, neither team is going to know who is ahead because the score zone is so incredibly close. Yeah, split by nine points are these two teams, and these objectives are becoming more and more important. However, they both have their tier one goal zones gone, so sending this downtown to that second tier two might be an opportunity. Rapid spin water spell right in the middle. Lucario close combat goes wide, doesn't find anybody. Sir, and that's a slow beam on the Blastoise here. Are they going to use that? That's a very late one. That slow is going to have to fight hard to get that Unite move back. Good spacing by Pee Wee there on the Alolan Ninetales and the Hoop of Phantom Force back, excuse me, through the wall to take their own portal back, and nobody goes down. Yeah, that feels like a really unfortunate Unite move, right? You've taken one of the most powerful Unite moves in the game. You've not capitalized on it. And now, for the rest of this match, up until Rayquaza, they have to look for an opportunity to generate this Unite move for Slowbro, sending it into their central area, picking up wild Pokemon, just trying to get that Unite back. It's a game changer, but it didn't change the game right there. In fact, it might have put them in a really, really disadvantageous position heading into Rayquaza. Yeah, the, what that did is it allowed Secret Ship to get that Regieleki for free. Hoenn couldn't contest. They had to send their damage dealer with the Slowbro to start weakening all the wild Pokemon so the Slowbro could get the last hits and get that Unite charged up. Now they have to deal with this Reggie Lucky, and there's 20 seconds until Rayquaza, and Secret Ship gets to posture on the map wherever they want. Yeah, the real question is, what does Secret Ship want to do? And it looks like they want to push forward and possibly fight right here. They have extremely aggressive positioning right here, basically inside the central area of Hoenn right now, and they're in a lot of trouble right now. Hoenn does not have a good position to move forward on Secret Ship, but Secret Ship is still slightly behind on points. We are waiting for that Unite move from Slowbro. I know they don't want to engage without it and it just ticked over to getting it. So the question is, who are they putting this big Unite move on? It's got to be on DLR. DLR's caught out in the bush, though. They know exactly where they are, and they're forced to retreat. Lucario has them sensed out, and they know where they're at. Quick little reset through the hyperspace hole, Spraggles, and we're waiting for this thing to kick off. We've got the Rapids and Water Spout right in the face of Pee Wee, or excuse me, of Don Lux, and now we're flipping back on top of the right crazy. That thing's at 10%. We're going to throw our moves at it. <laughs> Don Lux takes it with the Chandelure. The candle's on fire. We have the Unite move on top of Lucario. They got the Bliss assistance, they're able to move through. We got a couple shields, and this thing is split by nine points, Spraggles, and Hoenn is looking clean right now. Hoenn looks really good. They would love to get some points in here, and they do. Big 100 score right there. Giant Hundo Burger from this Slowbro, but this match is still incredibly close. They have a Rayquaza shield on Chandelure, as well as Blissey. It looks like Blissey was not able to score in the top path. Instead, it goes down. However, three scoring in the main base. This Lucario gets it, and it does. Another 100 points. It's going to put them way way up with one minute left in this match. That's the one you can't give up is the one that Frank just got, and they singed, they literally escorted the Chandelure in, they had the shield, that's the hundred they wanted. Everything else was just icing on the cake. No drunk cakes out here in the caster desk. Now we're just shooting out our Unite moves here as this thing is kind of on its last breath. Hoenn rallying back on the backside of that game, doing good. Looking incredible there in that final fight. Three members of Hoenn left against four members of Secret Ship, and here comes their attempt. They're going to run at this tier two goal zone. They need to score a lot. They basically need to KO every single member of Hoenn and then somehow score. It's possible, but Hoenn's gonna have to make some mistakes, honestly, to let them do that, and that is not happening. Nice big slow beam right there. Catches the Hoopa. We have another going down. That's two down on the side of Secret Ship, and they're gonna close this one out. Hoenn ties it up in game 
number two. Ultimately, Secret Ship just asking themselves, where did that go wrong? And to me, it was DLR getting sought out and sussed out on the backside, forcing them to peel all the way back around the team. And while that was going, Hohen flipped the switch and started engaging and found themselves a big W. Yeah, huge, huge win right here to tie it up. As we mentioned before, Secret Ship, they need these games right now. We're going to send this back on over to Zoinks and Wonder Chef to break it all down. Thank you so much, you two. Another game three, and uh, the secret ship who finds themselves in a tough spot. I mean, the story of this game was so interesting. Extremely tight game number two. Hohen definitely having a much better presence early in this game, and it really kept it that so close up until those final moments. Yeah, you can see this graph is almost just an identical line from both sides. There's like one moment where they got a little bit more on the side of Hohen, but overall, I feel like this is one of the closer sets that we've seen and we've seen a lot of close sets over today. Absolutely. Don Lux with 89,000 damage on that Chandelure, most in the lobby. I think this is a criminally underplayed Pokemon in our metagame right now. You and I were debating kind of the, <laughs> the Chandelure versus Alola Ninetales value, and while I think Peewee's Alola Ninetales looks amazing, and it's an amazing counter-dive Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You put up that Avalanche, you put up that Blizzard, it's so hard to jump onto an Alola Ninetales. Chandelure's Unite move is nothing to sleep on. That is such a good security tool and you saw how it worked out in that Rayquaza fight at the end of this last game. Yeah, I mean, they both have so much value. I do fully agree with you, though, uh, that we, I, I thought we were going to see way more Chandelure. Uh -huh. the currently, the special attackers that we have the option to pick, even if we were to say, let's just say we just get rid of Alone Nine Tails and Chandelure, we'd still be going down to some strong options, right? Yeah. I mean, we saw Espeon earlier today. There's just, there, it's just so many to go down for. Yeah. So I'm very surprised as well that we haven't seen more Chandelure today. It does bring some different things from Alone Nine Tails, but I feel like after that, it's going to be like, maybe we're going to start seeing more and more. Yeah, well, we put on a bit of a highlight reel, so let's take a look at this one. In group number two, sorry, group A in our game number two, it has been a very interesting one. Obviously, this game is so important for both of these teams that they want to be in the running at all against Team Peru, who's been looking amazing in this group. They need to win this game. Secret Ship winning this would be so, so important for them and obviously same for Hoenn here all these goals so early really putting Hoenn on the map but these big engages by the blast toys from secret ship really seem to be where their strategy was hinging on yeah and one thing to point out too just about this comp I feel like we didn't have too much to talk about or time to talk about is that of course Chandelure is amazing range damage but you combo that with Inteleon right that's a little bit more rare and that is just this double just uh, destruction this double cannon of this certain <laughs> range and it's exactly what we saw oh and look at that I mean Imprison is such a strong move, right? You put it onto a Pokemon like Hoopa, who has two great little get out of jail moves, and neither of them available when you're locked into that spot. So, Team Hoenn really looking good here in game number two and making this match very, very interesting. Secret Ship, again, put into a tough spot. And this Blastoise, I talked about how it was sort of the center point of their strategy. And in that final team fight, it felt like the Unite move, that Hydro Typhoon, not quite hitting the numbers they needed to. And mm -hmm. there we go, full advantage taken by Team Ho and putting Secret Ship into a tough spot. Yeah, this is looking to be, in my opinion, one of the strongest pools. But Kira on the Slowbro, our player of the game. Slowbro, a Pokemon that was uh, kind of just ignored for the previous yeah. set that we saw on broadcast. But uh, still, of course, one of those core meta defenders. Yeah, Kira will not be ignored, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that is something that we have to make very clear. Uh, they have been a player that for all season long has been instrumental in Hoenn's success. An amazing defender player. I mean, they're going up against Gakubari. This really does feel like a battle of two defender players in oh, yeah. top top tier which has been so fun to watch thus far secret ship currently hovering that lapras man Hoenn gonna be sticking with this zation ban do not want to see that in this game right triple zation ban in this three game set so uh, very much they have decided that this is the counter ban and honestly it's worked out well seemingly we obviously don't know exactly what would happen if they got the zacian <laughs> but if Hoenn's confident in it and they're doing this well i feel like it's a good choice the other side is gonna be lapras so the first pick is going to come down to probably like you said with the defenders well honestly though the thing is the 
Mori doesn't use the meta defender so much, so right. it's going to allow the Inteleon for spin. So one of their biggest strengths is the fact that they have a little more versatility. Now Owen is going to get their chance to grab the Slowbro again, which was so instrumental to the success in game number two. So game number three, they're going to be running a back Lucario as well. First pick position. I mean, it was impactful in both of these games we've seen so far, but it feels like it's been the only match so far in this tournament that mm -hmm. has had any presence. That's true. Is this going to be a real pick? Okay, no, it's not going to be. We did see yeah. Absol earlier, and I wouldn't be surprised if we did see some more Absol later in the tournament, but yeah. this is another Pokemon that we haven't seen, if that ends up being a pick. Nope. I'm just going to stop looking at what they're hovering <laughs> over because that is the wise thing to do. Uh, the Venusaur, though, that is going to be yes. somewhat different, and the Mew as well. I wonder if we're going to see the double beam comp. Absolutely, we're going to see it, and I just want to say, this uh, Mew it will probably be moved over to Don Lux. This mm -hmm. is their signature Pokemon. We've seen Don Lux now on the Venusaur, we've seen him on the Chandelure, but to see them on the Mew, I think it's going to be a rare treat. It's going to be so fun. They are so, so good at this beam build style of Mew. Gekubari, though, on the Trevenant again, and now a Dodrio from Secret Ship. That's going to be really interesting. By the way, when I was mentioning all the great special attackers, somehow I skipped past Mew. The point is there's just too many, and that's why we don't see them banned, yeah. I think, more, is that you can just keep flexing down. But exactly. I do like this. A pretty significant switch up from a good portion of the attacker side of Hoenn. Yeah. And I feel like that's going to bring a very different type of game to their game plan. No Alolan Ninetales, no Chandelure. We're going with a complete switch up instead. Inteleon and Mew are going to be rounding out those bottom paths respectively for their sides. Now, Obion on this Dodrio is something I'm really interested to see. Obviously, a very big stylistic change from the Blastoise they had in game number two. Is this what Secret Ship needs, or does Owen have the advantage in this match? We'll have to see the result very shortly as we send it over to Spraggles and Deuce next to break this one down. Game number three, Secret Ship. They are in the fight of their lives, their tournament lives here, Dude Snacks. Yeah, and Hoenn's not letting them get out of this one for free. Both of these teams want this win, of course, and I love that we're about to see this double beam come, and I was just about to say, if Mew wasn't picked, why aren't we seeing more Mew? That character is good. Yeah, Mew has, you know, it's strange with so many good special attackers as Zoinks and Wonder Chef were bringing up. Uh, it feels like you can really put so many different Pokemon into this role. We've seen Chandelure, we've seen Venusaur, of course we're seeing so much Inteleon, Alolan, Ninetales. There are just too many good choices right now. I, I could not agree more. Peewee going with Gakubari, they're going to leverage that experience share and try and get uh, Inteleon quickly. And of course Drizzile, the, the first evolution of that Sobble is going to try and get online and use Water Gun, one of the best secure early game secure tools that they have available to them. Yeah, I don't think anything really beats that secure tool as we see Froy here in this central area heading up now to try to get their level 5. Frank putting in the points in the top half. I mean, come on. The Yakao going to put the pressure on them, force them out a little bit, but it's the Doduo that I've got my eye on. They will need to get their stacks. They need to hit Dodrio. We're going to check how many hats it has. Yes, we will. And get it on Online. Obviously, a lot of you are waiting with bated breath at home to find out how many hats Dodrio has. Of course, the correct number of hats is three different hats. But a lot of teams don't know how to play this game at the level that I do, Dude Snacks, and they don't <laughs> select the correct amount of hats. Criminal behavior, to be honest. I mean, let's just, let's just say what it is. I don't want to say put him in jail, but at least give him a fine. <laughs> Save something. Yeah, come something. on. Come I'm not on. a reason. <laughs> As we head up to our top path right here, we've got that single striker Shifu. Or Shifu, we're seeing all different Urshifus across the board, but tons of teams prioritizing this Pokemon. Whether they do it to fight, you know, incredibly well with Rapid Strike or secure everything with that single strike. I must say that DLR is one of the few players we've seen that have switched between the different types throughout a match when they've had the opportunity. Typically, Teams are choosing it, they know exactly what they're going uh, in with, and then they play that over and over and over again. Uh, DLR using probably their composition, what the other team has, and making that decision in-game, in flight, and that really gives uh, some good versatility for Secret Ship. Yeah, you love to see a team that can take a Pokemon and pivot like that, knowing what the enemy team is bringing out and say, okay, I thought I was going Rapid Strike, but I think Single Strike is going to be the play for this one. Dodrio is another one of those Pokemon. We're seeing a ton of Drill Peck today, but you see players switch it up between drill peck and try attack depending on the kind of enemy composition that they are running into it's really cool to have pokemon that you don't know how they're going to play when they are selected 
Couldn't agree more. We're watching on this side. Good pressure and three players for Hoenn. Really babysitting that Ivysaur, which really needs help to get online. Just like War Turtle trying to get to Blastoise, Ivysaur to Venusaur is the same thing. Similar power spikes throughout the game as well. And that's something we'll want to keep track of because clearly Venusaur is going to be a key component in their strategy. Here we go. We have the Dodrio using that drill pick maybe a little bit early there, so they're not going to be able to get those birds as easily. You can see the massive solar beams coming out here from the Mew, from the Venusaur, as we get ready for this fight here in the bottom path. Nice big surf, trying to take the experience there. We do have them leveled up now over to Inteleon, so we're going to be able to see what they want to bring into this fight. And it is a snipe shot, and it lands true onto the Mew. Yakubar is at half HP. Nice egg bomb chips up three, so Hoenn able to reel back and get the spin. Facing, and that's what they're looking for here all game long. That's going to be on Kira and Texas to get that for them. If you're double bean comp, you want all the real estate in the world to work. But there we go. The Dodrio gets in, and they try to run straight into a solar beam here. As TLR tries to hit a wicked blow, but absolutely misses. Nice reset by Ikal. The Regirox at 10%. It comes through. It's sealed up. Three players down for Secret Ship. And it's Lucario that cleans it up with everybody standing. And that is a heck of a close combat, my friend. That happened so fast. Nice, huge secure there from Owen, massive team fight win, incredible overcap, and they just got themselves put into the power position here in this match as they move into the central area here of Secret Ship. They are just continuing to put the pressure on. Now coming up for this Reggie Alecki, they might be a little too late for this fight, but you know what? It's only at half right now. Lucario has incredible secure through its power up punch in close combat. We're going to have to see if it can out secure the single striker Shifu, and no, it cannot. No, it cannot now. It's retreating a little bit. Nice Egg Bomb to try and keep that. Unite move comes out. Tons of damage on Frank. But the Solar Beams are actually forcing the Urshifu out of dodge. And we have a Solar Beam that chunks the LR again. And look at this. Hoenn is working these Solar Beams incredibly well. Using the real estate that we have. Closing down alleys of retreat and engagement. And now they easily take care of the Reggie Alecki. And they're up big, Spring. They are up big. These Snipe Shots are getting some massive damage onto the side of Hoenn. But we have not seen a big KO yet with this move, this match. Obion in this central area here, looking to pick something up. Nice big player in here, but no, stopped by the slow bro Unite move, and they go down. The Mew is protected. They are safe. Great way to make sure Don Lux doesn't get KO'd. Slow beam, we have the sludge bomb over the wall, and that's a KO right there. <laughs> What, are we, what, what is that? What are we doing? <laughs> don't draw attention to it right now. Well, it's not working at all. Yakubari tries to stem the tide in the top path. Fairly successful here, but the lead is ridiculous, and Hoenn is making the magic happen at every other axis, and now they're up experience, scoreboard, and they're getting to be bullies. That's right. We got three seconds now until this bottom objective is coming up here for Hoenn. The team is moving down. We see Frank. Heading down to this bottom path. I don't know why, but that's how I have to say Frank's name. You can't just say Frank. It's Frank is heading down to the bottom path right here. We have the Hoopa heading down from Secret Ship. They have a Unite move, and there it comes. But they are actually in a lot of trouble right now, and it looks like they are going down to the Sucario, and they do. Listen, <laughs> call him Frank Castle, because that's a Punisher right now. Just KO'd the Hoopa, and now they get this thing for free. Nobody took that portal. It's a bait and switch. But the defense for home, again, because they have solar beams for the long range, they're reigning true, and they're not even getting any points in Fraggles. I mean, Hoenn has got this thing figured out. Front, back, and center. No questions asked. They're taking wild Pokemon while they're trying to surf on top of the other team. Secret Ship needs to figure this thing out fast. Yeah, Secret Ship is in a lot of trouble right here. Of course, their tournament life is on the line if they cannot pull out some victories here against Hoenn. And now we have Frank heading out to the bottom path, just barely missing that massive score. Just barely missing. And Teleon jumping in, though, and that's a good opportunity opportunity if Frank wants to go for the engagement they're buying time here it comes Obi-Wan on the uh, Dodrio to provide a little bit of cover and now Frank might be in a little bit of trouble here that's a lot of damage getting shelled their way and finally rings in a KO yeah I think Frank was trying their best they're calling Frank Reynolds because they just went and started blasting it did not work out for him right there <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one. sludge bomb solar beam comes through Yakubar is like I'm a tree I'm a ghost tree you can't poison me you can't sun me down I'm coming back for it but look at this we're under three minutes the team on the right has a huge lead i don't know too many numbers but i know 301 is more than 110 without wait let me check production doing the math 
three. Do I carry the three? No, you're right. It's way bigger. I'm not a mathematician, but the way we dress, we might as well be. Here we go. First KO down, and that's Obi-Wan that just is on the chopping block. One of the strongest characters on the side of Secret Ship. They were dealt with instantly. No questions asked. I mean, Hoenn, the whole squad from top to bottom is huge. Yeah, they're looking incredible right here. We've got that level 13 on Venusaur. We almost have level 13 on this Lucario. Slowbro is even level 12 on the side of Hoenn. As this Reggie Alecki is pushing towards this tier 2, they are in a powerful position right now. They've got vision. They know where this Urshifu is, and they are ready to take a big fight. Here comes the Trevenant, actually pushing Slowbro into a bit of a bad position, but the snipe shot misses, hits that second one. However, the soft boil keeping him healthy. Yeah, a lot of eggs being shelled out early, though. And look, Frank is on the backside. They're going to see if they can get an opportunity. They charge up, they engage. Who can they catch? They're trying to get on top. They are trying to be locked down. That's not going to happen. Yakubar playing very far forward. They use their Unite move. They catch three. Slow beam on top of the uh, Yakubar, and they get KO'd by Frank. One player down, two players down. Now we're going through. Oh, KO's drinking two. I'm not buying a hot box today, but let me be Frank right now as that whole team is wiped, and Hoenn is looking massive. Hoenn pushing forward right here. Here, the points raining in the hundo burgers the 78 burgers as Hoenn looks like they are sealing this game up Venusaur possibly not being able to score right here getting pushed back by Yakubari but it looks like more points still raining in 144 to 671 and I don't need to ask production I know that this game is not close it is not close at all we call that 500 point threshold the breaking point here because that means every single player on secret ship needs to have 50 AOS energy in their pockets. You score that, that's 100. And of course, every single player needs to score with 55 seconds left. That is a tall order. That is a tall order, and they are going for it right now. This is their hero play. This is their fight song. Can they do something about this right now? Nice big snipe shot hits the Mew, but they are not able to even break the shield. There they go. The shield is down. Huge wood hammer, but no. Trevenant goes down. Obi-Wan eats a massive solar beam. Dodrio goes down. Or she Fu goes down. That is it. Hoenn is taking this thing, and they are winning this game. They want to get themselves another ace. Is Hoopa going to roll back through? <laughs> they do. They're saying, hey, let's see if we can give you an ace. There you go. Have a gift, a parting gift from Secret Ship on the way out. Hoenn ship and secret ship off into the sunset that's right secret ship such an amazing team taking this to a game number three but hoen looked incredible right here special shout out to frank for being named frank yeah we we definitely didn't ride that joke into the ground of course we didn't we've never done that before and you can't expect that to happen in the future no absolutely not what a match here for hoen obviously what a disappointing match for secret ship they are not going to be able to move forward in this tournament. We have, I believe, two Japanese teams that have qualified here for day two, but Secret Ship will not be the third. No, they will not. Hoenn keeping their dreams alive, trying to keep it going. They said, Hoenn, stay in here, baby. We win in games. That being said, Secret Ship cannot be happy how that particular game shook out. Oh, Spragles, 